Hi, I'm Kathy from Eclectic Images, and today we're going to be playing around with alcohol inks. But rather than doing a class, I'm doing more of a demonstration in today. So looking at different surfaces that you can apply alcohol inks to, and also different tools that we can use to move our inks around. So we're going to start off going through some different tools, and I'm just going to be working on a piece of gloss card. I've popped a little bit of double-sided tape on that and I'm just going to stick it down to the surface of my Lazy Susan. The Lazy Susan means that I can move the card around easily as I'm working and blowing the inks. Um, and it's the tape there means it's going to stay put for me. Now you could also work on something like Upo is great. Um, the Masterpiece board is another really good surface. But let's get into for some basic blowing around techniques. Let's just work on the gloss card this time and then I'm going to start showing you some different surfaces. So to start with, let's grab a little bit of our chili pepper ink and we're going to pop a little bit of Claro extender down first and then put some blobs of chili pepper on. And we're going to add some pinata brass to this as well. Actually, let's do a bit of basic movement first. So, so for some basic movement, some of the tools that we can use. First one is a straw. So with a straw, if we pop a little bit of alcohol down near that colour, we can then blow out and get petal shapes, wispy shapes. Just make sure that when you breathe in to blow, that you're not breathing in over where you've just put the alcohol. Breathe in and then lean forward to blow. And we can get some great little shapes. We can get some, do some sharper breaths and get more fronds. Or yes, we can do real petal shapes where you actually start close and then lift off. So you get more of a rounded petal shape. So your straw gives you a lot of control. You do need to be careful that you're not breathing in the alcohol. Um, so that's a little bit of a drawback of the straw, but it does give you control, but just be careful how you use it. Also, when you're doing a lot of it, you can actually just run out of breath a bit. So, but that does give some really good effects. The other one that I use a lot, and this is something, this is a, a smaller version. This is the Beati air blower, which I've used before with the Shimmer Dust, and it's great for that. Tim Holtz has actually just released an air blower that's a larger version of this. And hopefully by the time you see this DVD, you actually will have the bigger one in stock. The I find that the smaller one, while it's great for the shimmer dust, with the alcohol inks, I want a little bit more blow and movement with the inks. So the Tim Holtz has got a bigger air um, holder, uh, air end. So that means you're gonna get more blow with it. So when I want to do a quick bit of ink, a quick burst of ink, I can just splay like that, similar to the straw, and we'll get splaying out. But when I want softer movement of the ink, I want to move the air source as I go along it. And this is where to have something with a bit bigger air capacity is a little bit better. Tim Holtz has actually designed his because he was a bit concerned about people using straws and wanted something to give them an option. Just because of that whole factor of breathing in the alcohol fumes. The one thing that I like about a blower that you can't do with a lot of other tools is I can do really fine movements of ink. So I can put that there and I can just puff it. And as I'm moving my card around, I'm just getting, I don't know whether Matthew can get a nice close up there. Let's pop a bit more alcohol in and we're just going to puff it. So you can see I can get quite a bit of difference of movement by using the puffer. The other thing, now let's just add some brass into this to make it a little bit more interesting as we work with it. Of course, you can use brass or gold when you've got the straw on or when you're doing the, it with the puffer. But we're gonna switch now to a hairdryer. Now, I haven't had a lot of success with using a hairdryer. It's something that hasn't, a tool that hasn't worked well for me, but I've seen a lot of other people working well with it. I think the, you do need a hairdryer that has a cool setting. If you're working with a hairdryer or a heat tool, so you're using warmth on it, it dries your inks too quick. They can be good when you want to dry your piece, but when you're wanting to work with it, they're going to dry it too fast. So you need a hairdryer that's got a cool setting on it, and also a, fa a fairly low setting. A lot of them are very 
powerful and you'll see on the packaging, oh, 200 watts, super power. That's not what we want for this. We actually want less power. And I think that's the problem with the one that I'm using is it's a little bit too strong but I'll still show you the technique. The one that I've seen recommended is a Revlon one that's actually rather than a hair dryer, it's a, hair, uh, a brush hair styler and it's got a, a softer flow of air. Anyway, but we'll show you the technique with the hair dryer. So I've got it on my cool setting and I'm just going to put it onto the lower setting of air. And the idea is that you don't blow directly on top of your inks. We're going to blow next to where we want the air movement. So the air is coming out and you're getting that movement of air coming out, a bit more flow and a bit less, more flow, less blow. Ha! <laughs> I'm so clever, aren't I? Okay, let's put a bit of alcohol in there. And we're gonna start our hair dry. This is a noisy one too. Put a bit more chili in there and a bit more alcohol and you'll get to see the movement a bit more. Now you notice that when I was about to put more alcohol on or more colour, I actually faced the head right away from my piece. I didn't want to just blow everything everywhere. But you can see you can get some really nice movement there. But I find it a little bit, a little bit harder to control than the blower, but it does, it's not as much hard work. That when you're doing the puffer, you've got to keep on puffing it and that itself can be a little bit tiring. So in that way, the hairdryer can be easier. Now, the other tool that we can use is an airbrush. I'll just turn mine on. Now, an airbrush, I find, probably gives the most variety of different movements and patterns and things that you can do, but it's probably the hardest one to master. And the, the, the problem is getting a really gentle flow of air or a stronger flow and having it a controlled flow. It does take practice to get to, used to using it. So we can do quite a bit of movement. We can get really strong movements. So if I wanted to, I can really splay that ink out. But I can also do some really soft movements with it. And I like to actually just test it on myself that I've got a bit of airflow. I'll just move that into shot there. Where are we, Matthew? So I've got a little, I'm just testing the airflow on my arm first. So, and then I just keep that going as I add it to my piece. So again, put the air away from your piece while you're adding some more alcohol or more colour. Again, you can use it from side to side. Let's just get that moving up this way a little bit. I'm going to give it a bit stronger flow. We can move it from side to side as we're working. Let's just get a soft flow going again. So I can work it from that way, work it back again, or I can turn my Lazy Susan, or as I usually do, a little bit of both. So we're trying to move it, let's blow it back on itself, move the inks out, blow them back. And this is how you get your lovely wispy looks. Now I'm not trying to create a particular piece here, this looks horrible, because we're just showing different effects, we're not actually trying to create um, a working piece of art. So again, we can go straight down and do a straight foof out that way. We can do short foofs, which can be really effective, or we can do our, our gentle flow with more gentle movement. You can see we're just softly rolling that ink around. So the airbrush gives you lots of different moves you can do. It's not a lot of hard work <coughs> to hold the, the I don't, there's probably a technical name for it, I just can't think of it. To hold the air down, to hold the airflow happening, that's not a lot of hard work. It's just practice with getting the right pressure to get the effects that you want to get. get. So that's some of our main tools that we can use. I'm just going to switch that off so it doesn't keep buzzing. Um, the other thing is just using a brush. 
and I usually find I'll work with a couple of brushes on the go at once. It says me not being able to find what I've done with my brush. Okay, so we could pop a little bit of ink and we could put it on our work surface. I'm just gonna add it onto here. Um, and a bit of our alcohol. And we could actually just work to pick up that ink and put it where we want it. And then we could use another brush to add in alcohol. Now this is what I use when I'm working on small surfaces. So I've got more control over where I'm putting my inks. Again, I might still use a little bit of blower tool just to move things around. Uh, now which color did I have on which I had alcohol on there. So I'm just going to put some alcohol on there. So you can see you've got a little bit, you've got a lot of control with a brush with where you're putting. It's actually sometimes more difficult with a brush to make it look random. So when I'm, the sorts of things I do with a brush would be the, when I'm working in a limited area, something like where I've been painting these wands. So here I've done these using uh, a couple of brushes at a time. This one I just did the passion purple and gold. Here I use passion purple with Blanco with the white to get quite different looks. This is one where I've used greens. Now these are going to make gorgeous presents with to give to little kids who love Harry Potter and oh well, good kids, all of us we love Harry Potter, we'd love a wand. Um, the wands we actually now do sell these. Blanks, my son makes them, so we sell these on the website. I just put a coat of white satin smooth house paint on the areas that I was going to put the alcohol inks on. Otherwise the wood itself is too absorbent. So I actually coated it with, with white, let that sit for a little while or over dry overnight and then I could start playing with my colours. So I applied those with a brush, occasionally a little bit of air blower, but mostly it was the brush and on the wood as well as the several surfaces, wood, um, acetate, tin. There's a couple where I find the Claro extender works much better than using alcohol. Other surfaces, one another one we're going to show now is a tile. These work great with um, alcohol or just the colours. Because it's the it's got a glazed surface, you can do just about anything on a tile. So let's do a quick tile. Uh, I'll stick with the Santa Fe red. I'm not even going to put down any anything first. I'm just going to pop a little bit of red on. We're going to pop a little bit of brass on. And then using alcohol, and I think we will go for the airbrush for this one. Get a little bit of airflow, pop some alcohol on, and I can start to move those colours around. Get some real wispy looks. Scope it out that side, so I'm going to blow the colour into it a little bit. Tiles are so much fun to work on because you can just keep playing and playing, moving your colours around. And if you don't like it, if you've got something like a tile or the masterpiece board is good for this, if you don't like it, you can just put a bit of alcohol on and wipe the whole thing off and start again. Now let's see if we can get some more wispies happening. So a bit of alcohol, we're going to move that colour out into that and then very quickly move it back again. Get some wispiness happening. The tiles are so much fun. Now with a tile you can also use your normal applicator tool. Now we used this in the original, our beginners DVD. So I'm just going to use a little bit of, because this pad's already got sangria on it. Let me just pop a drop of sangria and a drop of our Claro extender. And we could actually just make a little bit of a background to this tile. Actually, let's pop a bit of Santa Fe red in there as well. So your applicator tools are great for different surfaces as well as we're using them on card. Of course you can also do things like spritzing a bit of alcohol on to move those inks around. We can add some alcohol drops just to let the colours 
move a little bit more. A tile is a great surface to work on. Now sometimes enough movement is got just by adding drops of alcohol to something and we can hold that up and let it run a little bit. I'm always tempted to keep playing though. I can't just stop at one little, little bit. I've got to keep moving it and blowing it and messing with it and stuff like that. Um, once we put our alcohol on, we can also keep going back to just patting with our little applicator just to try and keep that looking with the theme that I had. So yeah, tiles are great fun to play with. I'm just going to bring another couple into shop that we've been playing with. That's one just done with sangria with uh, brass, I think. Uh, and this is one that we'll show the DVD, the video later doing these ones, working on with the silver and the greys as well. So that's just a little bit of look as a tile as a surface. And other things that we can use. We can use plastic, glass, acetate. Here's one that I've already done where I've actually put, um, I've actually embossed a mandala with black on the acetate, heating it very carefully. And I've kind of hold it up so Matthews doesn't get too much flare. Then I've actually turned it over and applied our alcohol inks on the back. And it was basically just a matter of just dropping them on and then a little bit of blowing just to move them round a little bit and to make them blend. Um, didn't like the alcohol when I used it on acetate. I'm look, going for acetate, I'm going for like a stained glass window look. So what the alcohol did, because it actually lifts the colour out, it then created a spot where there was very little ink. So because I wanted the colours richer, if I wanted to move them and blend them better, I'd go with the Clairo extender instead. So you can pop that down and that's going to move the colours and blend them together without actually lifting colour away. So you can imagine that piece, let me get just a little bit of something light to put underneath it. Got a bit of white card there. You can imagine that done with a, a window aperture card as a stained glass window on the front of a card. So acetate can be fabulous. Just be careful when you're heating it. The other surface, another surface that's wonderful to work on is metal. So tins. This is one of my stamp storage tins and I've actually done my colouring and then I've embossed it uh, with the gold embossing powder on one of our mandalas. Uh, this is one of my tins that I keep small stamps in. So it's been done just with pouncing on with our applicator tool. Whereas this one was done by dropping colours on, moving them with the air blower and also putting in some of the Blanco. Now when you're using the Blanco, don't use alcohol, use your Clairo extender. So we're just going to add a little bit more colour down the side of this one so you can see it. So I was using teal and Baja Blue and Blanco, like the other metallics, needs a good shape. Let's give that one a good shape. Okay, so let's put down a little bit of colour. Bit of our teal, a bit more beige blue down there. And I'm going to get my air blower and we're going to add some Clairo first just to basically get a little bit of movement starting. Actually, I'm just going to whisk that out of there and pop this on the Lazy Susan. It keeps me working in one spot so Matthew can follow me with the camera, but it also means I can spin it round. and spin it so that I'm not blocking you guys from view. Okay, let's add some Blanco in there and see what happens. And a little bit more Claro. And you'll notice the colours mix with it and it lightens them. So you can get some fantastic effects with it. It's a little bit more clear up there so we can blend that bit back onto itself. So you can do so much blending effects just by continually popping on a little bit of your, your Claro and then just moving your inks around. Let's pop a bit more uh, white down this corner. It's also a really good medium to work with uh, the white if you're wanting to work um, on dark cardstock. And you can actually lay down, and this is something we might do in another DVD actually, um, lay down like a flower or something in white and then start putting your colours over the top of it. So where it might not normally show up on dark cardstock, um, your white gives a base for the colours. 
trying to remember to not get my hand in the way. Let's shove some of that white up there. Whew. So the Blanco just gives you some really different marbled effects. So that's working on a tin. And so we can then emboss over the top of that if we want to. Or as I did with trying to think one earlier I think one of the earlier demonstrations I did we did it on a tin and then stamped uh, with black on the tin anyway so what are some of the other things we can do we've done wood let's do plastic so a plastic boring plastic bottle let's grab some senorita magenta and some passion purple so you can imagine this um, it's I wouldn't do alcohol inks on something that you're going to use uh, for food like you wouldn't do it on a glass that you're going to use as a glass, but you do, you might do it on a vase or a glass that you're going to then put a tea light candle into, particularly um, an LED candle so it hasn't got the heat. Uh, alcohol inks are flammable while you're working with them, but th you could actually put a candle inside one. It's not going to catch a light once it's done and dry. So we could just roll that around. I could use air blowers and things as well, or we could just let the ink colors run just by moving them. So that's just alcohol that I'm adding onto this, just so that we get loads of movement. Of course, it's gonna be a little bit uncontrolled in spots, so let's actually make a feature of that bit. If you're not happy how it's going with just rolling, bring your blower in, puff it around a bit, and you can move those colours a bit more. Now you can imagine this too done on things like um, glass or plastic Christmas baubles. How beautiful would that look on your Christmas tree? That's got the ideas going, hasn't it? Actually, for the Great Australian Craft Show, the next one, um, not our number six, our number seven is going to have a Christmas theme. So we might do some Christmas baubles. I'm just, I've dripped ink there, and so rather than wasting it, I'm actually just gonna pick it up and put more on the container. That's very cool. So that's plastic. Other things that we can work with, we could work on a plastic tub that you use for keeping stuff in. Now I'm just going to stomp that on there and pick up a bit of colour and then I could actually just add into that some alcohol. I could add into that a little bit of Blanco and some Claro. And let's get a little bit of foofing around there happening. And that was just picking up some of that Passion Purple that was on my worksheet. So that you can decorate all your little holder jars and things that you use in your craft room, as well as they make really nice gifts. Um, you could do ceramic, so over as like um, um, terracotta pot plants, but I for pot plants. So, but I would paint the terracotta because like wood, it's very absorbent. I would paint that with your white house paint first, and then do your alcohol inks over the top. You can do the same with rocks. Give it a coat of white paint, paint over the top. Here I've just used just a bit of silver on the dark. So with so working with white or silver looks really good on a dark surface. Let's pop that one to one side. Now also we can work on, um, I mentioned glass. Let's just clear that up a little bit. You can also work on glass beads. And I've actually got one here that I've got stuck onto a pencil so I can hang onto it. So we can work on a little glass bead. Again, we could use a brush or we could use um, a fuffa. Just to move our colours around. I'm going to go with a bit of Claro because I don't want to take away from the intensity of the colours. Moving that, add a little bit of barge of blue in the side there. So yeah, any sort of glass surface will take it. Like we can see, let's put a bit of pink on this side so it shows up a little bit more. Uh, that's Senorita Magenta that I was using there. Okay, now if I lift it off the pencil and put onto a bit of white 
a white surface, you'll be able to see a little bit more what pattern we've got there, or no, maybe if I just hold it up to the light. You can sort of see it on the, on the white paper, but if I hold that to the light, You've got this great surface because it's see-through. So glass beads are wonderful. The other thing, of course, is your metal embellishments. Things like um, metal pieces or brads, anything like that, you can colour. Now we can just dab colours on. We could use a brush to move those around. We could use our fufu just to blow them around a bit. Something this small, I've put my brush down somewhere, but something this small I would probably tend to work more with a brush. Let's just give that a bit of wild foofing, shall we? Okay, we're just going to shift that off there so you can get a look at it. But yeah, that will dry and, oh sorry Matthew, put it where you can actually see it. That will dry and look amazing on the um, on the metal. So, colour your hands, um, <laughs> colour your tins, as I said, wood, uh, so wood, terracotta, stones, put a coat of white paint on first. Sometimes even your canvases, you need to put a bit of a white coat of white paint on first to give something that the colours can move on and not just be absorbed straight away. Other surfaces like your plastic and your glass, your acetate, you're right just to put the colours straight on. So just think about how absorbent your surface is before you put your alcohol inks on it. Okay, so I've had fun. Hope you have too. I hope I've covered everything that I meant to in this one. Um, so yeah, have a play with things like using the white mixative, the Blanco, in with your other colours uh, because that just creates some gorgeous effects there. Try it on your storage containers, your tins, all sorts of things. Have just have a play. <laughs> okay, thank you very much for watching. Don't forget, if you're watching on our YouTube channel, please hit the subscribe button and then you'll see next time when we post up a new video. And we hope you enjoyed it. Thanks for watching.